you just watched started with one image. This image is the foundation of the entire movie. Every shot, every camera angle, every moment of tension, all of it comes from this single frame. This is not just an image. This is a key cinematic frame. If this frame is weak, then that means the final movie will also feel weak. If it's strong, then that means everything that follows becomes easier and even stronger. So here's what you need to look for. Cleaner subject focus. And that means one obvious point of attention. Readable body language. And this means even as a still image, it should suggest what's about to happen. Depth and perspective. And that means foreground, subject, and even background. And finally, grounded lighting with mode. This means enough atmosphere to set the tone without breaking realism. So this is the first image that I generated that has built the foundation of the entire movie you watched earlier. And this is the prompt. It's simple, short, and clean. Create a dynamic combat scene featuring an Amazon warrior battling a massive bear. That's it. You can reuse it, tweak it, or use it as a reference for your own idea. What matters is understanding how this image is structured. Once this image is locked, then everything else builds on top of it. Now let's turn this single image image into cinematic shots. Now that the foundation image is locked, this is where things get powerful. I take that single image and bring it into Higgs Field AI. What Higgs Field does really well is understanding the nature of the reference image. It doesn't just remix it, it reads it. So when you land on a website, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. What you want to do is look at the clips that are on the top. You're then going to click on the right arrow right here until you find where it says shots. As soon as you find it, you simply just click on shots and this is where the magic happens. So as you can see, it's currently showing the different shots that I generated. Normally, you will just see a blank page with an example playing in the background, instructing you how to upload your image to start generating those shots. So what happens is from one image, Higgsville generates nine cinematic shots with different camera angles and compositions, white shots, close-ups, profile angles, overhead perspectives, and this instantly gives you coverage like a real film should. Instead of guessing camera angles, you're choosing from cinematic options that already make sense for your scene. So if you're on the free plan, you get 10 daily credits. Each set of nine shots costs four credits, which means you can generate up to 18 shots per day without paying. That's more than enough to build a short cinematic sequence. And so my next step was as simple as that. I go through the generated shots and select the ones that support the story, not the flashiest ones, the ones that create tension and progression. So as you can see from the nine images, I only picked up eight of them. The reason for that is if you take a look at the one at the bottom right, you'll see that they're both walking friendly. And that's what I did not want as part of my video. So these shots now become my scenes. Once I have my selected shots, I export them and move to the next step. All you got to do in order to download your selected or desired images from the different shots, you simply just click on each one that matters to you. Once you're happy with your selection, you're simply going to click on the download button right here and you're going to say download selected images. If all images are appealing to you, then you would click on the download full grid instead. So now is the time to bring these stills to life. Now for this part, I used Hilo AI. This step was all about control. I imported each shot as a separate scene. For most of this project, I used the start and end frame model. That allowed me to define exactly how each scene started and exactly how it ended. This is what gave me seamless cinematic transitions instead of random cuts. And of course, I wasn't asking the AI to invent anything. I was directing motion between two fixed frames. Each clip was kept short and intentional. Minimal camera movement, strategic stillness, only the motion that served the story. And so that was the main reason I used Hilo AI because it's very powerful and it allowed me control over my camera motion. When you get onto the website, what you want to do is simply click on the video icon on the left side right here. And this is how it's going to look like. Obviously, if you haven't started using it yet, so you won't see anything on the right side, there won't be any projects. It'll be just this page that you're looking at that allows you to import your images. And so in order to start using the start and ending frame, first, you want to click on the drop down menu at the bottom right here. First of all, Hilo AI have their own video models, which is amazing. Secondly, they also have access to Veo 3.1 and Sora 2. So if you want to use those, you'll get amazing results. But of course, I had to use Hilo's models because I liked them better. Unfortunately, Hilo's latest models does not support the start and end frame. So 2.3 does not support that. The one that supports their start and end frame is their older model, which is 2.0. So you select that. And then from here, you can click on the start button right here to, to select your image. 
Obviously, I have imported some of the images and all the scenes that I wanted to use for this project. So you can select the image once you've imported it as an asset. Or if you haven't yet, you'll just simply click on the image icon right here to import from your local storage. Next, you click on the end frame right here and then do the same thing. You can choose image history and again, and choose the image from the assets available or import your own from your local storage. Now having the ability to use the start and end frame is very powerful and that's what I like about Hilo AI, but it does not mean that you have to stick to it all the time because sometimes you may have a single image that you want to deal with it as an individual. At that point, what you want to do is simply click on the drop down menu and choose one of their latest models. They have 2.3 and 2.3 fast. The difference is that the first one says it's enhanced quality, smoother and truer. On the second one that's faster, it says faster speed, higher efficiency. So choose whatever you like and then go from there. These two are only available for a single and an individual image to video generation. Once you've chosen your desired model and imported your image, the next thing you want to do is click on the drop down menu right next to it right here to choose between different resolutions and duration. So you'll notice here that when you go for the 1080p, which is the higher resolution that you're only allowed for six seconds, it does not go up to 10 seconds. And in my perspective and experience, I think the shorter, the better. So your scenes look more attractive and engaging and not boring. If you go for the lower resolution like the 768p you'll be able to choose between six seconds or 10 seconds obviously each resolution and duration sets the cost of each generation so for a lower resolution and time it'll cost you around 25 credits if you go for the higher one it's usually going to cost you 80 credits next up i want to show you a technique to take control over your camera motion so what you want to do when you've pasted the prompt into the text box right here you'll notice that there are three icons right above this drop down menu you simply click on the camera icon right there you'll see this panel where you can choose between the cinematic shots or the free selection you can simply just hover over each one of those to see what the motion looks like and then you can go from there there is also the free selection so if you click on that one you'll see that they have even more camera motion that you can choose from each one of those has an in and out animations this one is a truck left this one is a truck right and so on you hover over each one to see what they look like and choose your desired camera motion that is how you take control over your camera motion so let me show you how you can apply that into your prompt and take control over your camera movement after pasting the prompt it's very important that you plan this out before even working with your prompt you need to choose your desired camera motion so that you can plan it before you tweak it in the prompt and i've already done that using chat gpt and i told it exactly what camera motion do i want to use for this specific prompt you'll notice here in the prompt where it says the camera starts behind and slightly to the left of the hunter and performs a smooth right circling camera motion the right circling camera motion is the one that i want to change so the one that i chose is called right circling so i'm simply just going to highlight where it says right circling because that's the one i chose i let that like this simply click on the camera icon and from here i'm going to choose the one i wanted which is right circling and now i've applied the camera motion exactly how i want it within the prompt all i need is to click on the generate button where it says 80 credits right here obviously i don't have the images but showing you this is how you take control by directing your camera movements from this panel by clicking on the camera icon choosing any of the cinematic shots or simply go for the free selection whatever suits you best and when you're done start generating and this is how the result turned out to be Now, after generating the clips, I exported them and arranged them in a sequence. And at that point, the movie was already there. What remained was refining pacing, tension, and escalation. And so let me show you how I structured the scenes to build cinematic tension. And for that, I used CapCut to edit my videos and combine all the clips and turn them into a great movie. All I did was simply just importing the clips into the media folder right here, alongside the background music and the sound effects. I usually use Pixabay to find great background music, sound effects, 
images and even video clips. So you can use that too because it's free. Once you've imported all your media files, now you're ready to combine all the clips and turn them into a cinematic movie. So all I did was simply just drag in each clip one after the other on the timeline. And then I added the background music. You can see here I have a couple of background music tracks and I only have a couple of sound effects, one here and then one here. Once you've arranged the order of your clips and cut out the parts that you don't want, now you're ready to export your project by clicking on the export button on the top right. There are many tutorials out there on YouTube that you can watch and learn in a few days. CapCut has a free version and it's so powerful. I included these assets so you can study a real cinematic setup, not just your theory. You can recreate this project step by step or you can take the structure and apply it to a completely different idea. The goal isn't to copy the movie. The goal is to understand how a cinematic sequence is built using AI. Look at how the shots are ordered. Look at where motion is used and where it's removed. Look at how tension is built before action happens. That's the part most people skip. All the links are included so you can explore the tools yourself and test different ideas. Use the free plans if you want. There's no pressure to buy anything. The entire process is about control, not complexity. One strong image, cinematic coverage, directed motion, intentional restraint. That's how this short was made. Now you've seen the result and the process behind it. And so if you found this video helpful, please like the video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And I'd be grateful if you share it with others. Until then, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.